For this tutorial, I'm using the Editing Workspace. You can reset the workspace by double-clicking on the Editing name in the Workspaces panel and clicking Yes to confirm. When editing clips into a sequence, there are always going to be four marks in time that are important. That's two in points and two out points. These set the start and end of the section of the clip you want to use and the start and end for the placement of that clip in a sequence. It's possible to work out the fourth point from any other three, so you only actually need three of the points, and almost every time a clip is added to a sequence, it's using a three-point edit. Now let's try this out. I'm going to open up my assets and find this butterfly clip in my project panel, and I'll just drag the whole thing into my sequence. Well, that works perfectly well, but it's not really a three-point edit. Any marks in the sequence are ignored, and of course I haven't specified an in or an out point for the source clip. So I'm going to undo with Control-Z here on Windows or Command-Z on Mac OS. Now in the source monitor, I've got my playhead pretty much lined up where I'd like an in point, so I'll click to add one of those. And then I think perhaps just as the butterfly's wing is near the edge of the screen, I'll mark an out point. In the Timeline panel, I'm going to add an in point only. I'll position my playhead where I want it, and I'm going to press the I key to mark an in point, and I'm going to move the playhead out of the way. Now, if you don't have an in point, the playhead will be used as the in point, but I want you to see the long way around to fully understand this workflow, first of all. We have our three points. We're ready to make the edit, so I'm going to click to perform an overwrite edit. The in point on the source clip was aligned with the in point in the sequence. And we've got the duration of the source clip as defined by the out mark here added to the sequence. So it's pretty straightforward. The fourth point has been calculated automatically in the sequence based on that source clip duration. You can exclude any of the four points. For example, I'm just going to undo again and again to get rid of those marks in the Timeline panel, and I'm just going to mark an out point. I'm pressing the O key here on the keyboard, and again, I'll move the playhead out of the way. Now, when I perform my overwrite edit, the end of the clip has been aligned with the end of the selection in the Timeline panel. If I just move the playhead back a touch, you can see we're right there at the end of the action. This is great if you've got a piece of action at the end of the clip that matters rather than at the beginning. You can still time it with events in your sequence. By the way, you won't get the same results if you perform an insert edit where everything shuffles out of the way. So to use this technique of back timing the action, make sure you use an overwrite edit. I'll just undo again and again. Now, I'm going to close the gap a bit. I'm going to trim the end of this first clip out so that we have a smaller space, and I'm going to select that gap and press the forward slash key on my keyboard. This automatically marks the gap, so I can fill it with the contents of my clip. Over in the source monitor, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to choose clear in and out. I'm going to choose an in point. That works pretty well for me, and I'm going to perform the overwrite edit. This time, the duration has been specified by the in and out points in the sequence rather than in the clip. And because we had an in point in the clip, it's been aligned with the in point in the sequence. We could have easily set an out point in the clip instead, and of course, the contents of the clip would be back timed to fill that gap. This is a powerful way to perform an edit in Premiere Pro if you need to replace some content or fill in some content where the end of the clip matters more than the beginning. Knowing what to expect when you're excluding one or other in or out point gives you more control in the edit. It can seem confusing when you first start out, but the best way to get to grips with this is to try it yourself. It's worth noting that the source patching buttons change the track your clips will be added to. You can just drag them up or down to change that. It's also worth noting that the track selection buttons have no impact on three-point edits. So that's an introduction to three-point editing in Adobe Premiere Pro CC.